the college football experience, San Jose State Spartans 2022 season preview episode on the Sports Gambling Podcast Network is presented by WinBet. Bet $100 at WinBet and get a $100 free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. IP Vanish is the official VPN of SGPN. They're offered 70% off if you go to ipvanish.com slash SGP. That's ipvanish.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by SGPN Discord. Yes, make sure to check out our new Discord server. It is the perfect place to interact and sweat out bets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. This is Brian Bosworth, aka the Boz, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. Peace out, Boz out. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. Welcome to the college football experience. San Jose State Spartans 2022 season preview episode. My name is Kobe Swinging Database Dan, aka Pick Don D. That's not a pick, this is a Pick. When Dundee happened, he was a superstar. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. <laughs> oh, the real Sparty, Patty C. <laughs> the real Sparty. I love some San Jose State Spartan there it football. Is. Subscribe on YouTube. You can watch this. We are the college football experience. Patty C. I mean, look, I, I just, I'm a big fan. Big fan of the program. Like what they're doing on the basketball front too. Subscribe to the college basketball experience as well. Tim Miles doing a decent job on the hardwood in San Jose. I am joined by my co-host, former former JMU Duke defensive back. Give it up for the burrito eating, sideline kiss stealing, wheeling and dealing, Patty C in the place to be. Hi, well. They are the epitome of a wild one. And, and, and really I I'm all over the place on, on this team. I would say I locked them up a year ago. That was one of me and NC Knicks locks that did not pan out. Hey, sometimes it's maybe good. Sometimes it's maybe shit. <laughs> and uh, the year before they won the mountain West, they've actually won the mountain West more recently than Boise state. A lot of people probably don't know that if you're in a little chat, but I think Brent Brennan last year, we liked all these returning starters. We thought this team was going to be better. I know they got dinged up at the quarterback spot a couple different times, but I think Brent Brennan was probably sitting there saying, what the fuck did I do wrong? (laughs) Um, Well, when you have a great year, like they had in 2020, you kind of have to expect a little bit of a backslide. You know, you can't always just have your best season ever. You know? Well, that's true. But at the same time, I just feel like they were returning so much last year that it was like, they have to at least be a bowl team. Yeah. I know. I know. Uh, you know, they had some, some uh, unfortunate injuries were plaguing them some, but also they just, there was a couple times like mainly that Western Michigan game. I was shocked. Yeah. They got their ass whooped that bad in Western Kalamazoo. Michigan was on a roll at that point. <laughs> That's uh, true. Just came off a win against Pitt, who won the ACC. Yeah, it was probably pretty pumped off that. But even the, uh, I think they should have won in Fort Collins. They didn't, but they they should have. They they almost beat San Diego State, who won twelve games. That one game went to double overtime. They mm-hmm. lost nineteen thirteen. They the Nevada who, got a game. who was in contention for the for the Mountain West Championship. They lose by three. Couple close ones. Couple um, close ones. They did get housed by Fresno on Thanksgiving. Ultimately, I think, you know, it's just hard to maintain. What they do? Seven and one. Yeah. Two years ago. But they passed the eye test that year. They were very physical. Even the year before I saw that tide turn when they won at Arkansas. Yeah. You actually predicted yeah. that uh twenty twenty season like Shockingly well, shockingly well. 
but I ate shit last year. So that's what I'm saying. It's, it's a hard, it's a hard uh, forecast, but Patty C you know, with every hard forecast comes, you know, Dundee's got to just, uh, I think tide turning. I see, as I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of, tur- it's easy to see a tide turn. <laughs> Tide turning. <laughs> Did I say those words? Did I say those words, Patty C? For because a second time in a row, it's going to tr- turn right back. It's going to turn back, but hold on. This is the San Jose State Spartans. Jeff Garcia. Steve DeBerg. Gil Bird. Dude. Mervin Fernandez. Nice. Dwight Lowry. Dropping some. Uh, you can go on and on and on. Because when the Spartans, Jack Elway, <laughs> let's do this damn thing. I'm just looking at the uh, history of draft picks. The fact that you're pulling out these guys is unbelievable to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's no prep. All right. They might think I wrote this. Oh, shit here down. you go. Here's one that I'm surprised you didn't drop. Who did I miss? Johnny Johnson. Shit, I knew that one, one too. One of your man. favorites all it's time. It's my boy. <laughs> drafted by the Phoenix Cardinals. The number of headaches Johnny Johnson caused me at Tecmo Super Bowl <laughs> on account of Colby Dent. <laughs> my guy, man. Shout out to Johnny Johnson wherever he's at. But look, Patty C. I think this team is better than what we think they are, but they're also. <laughs> they're, I think, the most interesting team in the Mountain West this year no. because. They're very unpredictable. They are unpredictable. And uh, what makes them less like, I guess, interesting is the fact that their schedule is hard as hell this year. True. But I also think they're very capable of beating some of these teams and I'll get to what they did. I thought they did great in the transfer portal. We're going to get to that, but offensive coordinator, Kevin McGiven is back. Uh, Brent Brennan uh, he's been there for five years now, Patty C 20 and 37. What do you think of Brennan overall? I mean, he's doing great. Yeah, <laughs> we we reviewed his uh, coaching history. Kind of a West um, B yeah. man on the West Coast. He's, he's been under a lot of great Dick Tomey, uh, Rick Neuheisel, uh, uh, Mike McIntyre, Mike Riley, June Jones. He's been <laughs> he's related to Colt Brennan. Rest in peace. There you go. And he's got he, stops. He played wide receiver at UCLA for Terry Donahue back when UCLA actually was legit at football. Yeah. Um. Maybe they're coming back. I don't know, but I mean, yeah, he's, he's been everywhere. He's Coaching got stops. stops in Washington, Oregon, Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii Arizona, Arizona, and all over California. <laughs> you gotta Mr. love it, Mr. Western. <laughs> well, what? and we found out he's born. Oh, uh, his dad played at San Jose State. Yeah, <laughs> and his mom was a football cheerleader for the team. Amazing. This is inc- He should never leave San Which Jose. Which is twenty or thirty less than thirty minutes from yeah. his home. Yeah, where he grew up. I mean, yeah. this is a this is a dream scenario here. Yeah, he should never leave there unless it's to Palo Alto, which is twelve minutes from where he grew up. Really? Yeah. Interesting. If he but has a great year, you wonder. Is David Shaw hanging out? You up? wonder. I mean, I, David Shaw makes a lot of money for three wins every year. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see him leaving that any, but maybe Stanford. I mean, gets I think David Shaw is a good coach. I mean, and 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 to his credit, to David Shaw's credit, like Stanford's schedules, in my opinion, one of the crazy every year. I would say they're one of the crazier schedules of all of college football, consistently year after year. But Brent Brennan doing a hell of a good job and offensive coordinator, you know, he's got his work cut out from this year, Kevin McGiven, because last year I thought that was one of the, that was the clear weakness of the team was the offensive side of the ball, which is, which was kind of, like I said, I know their quarterbacks got dinged up. I I know uh, what's my guy's name, the transfer Felipe Franks and Nick Nash, both, I think were getting dinged up. Um, So they became kind of a predictable offense. Still not still in the, I guess, top half of the country and Scoring offense, 60, uh, 62nd in the country on, no, I'm looking at 2020. Yeah, I'm like, I'm what are you talking about? Uh, I'm like, they were 118th in scoring offense. Yeah, they were the 12th so. worst offense in the nation last year. Yeah. They took a big step backward. Didn't well, they? and they became, uh, I mean, 110th in rush offense, 77th in pass offense charting at the at 108 in total offense. I know some of that was injury, but some of that was also on McGiven. I got, I got to throw it out there. Um, I do think though patience, because I do think they might have a good situation coming in. Um, they still have Nick Nash who got in the past two years in, in certain, certain spots as a backup. Yeah. He's going to be the backup. I think this year they went out and got Chevin Cordiero from Hawaii, which I think, I think if you haven't watched a lot of Hawaii football, I've always been impressed with this kid. Um, and I think he is a very athletic guy and he needs to stay healthy. Cause I know he runs it a decent amount. 
But what he needs to do is improve that completion percentage. Only 55% last year. Well, last year was crazy. Last year, go to, go to the year before. Because last year, remember, like the team quit. That's true. Yeah, he was sixty-two percent yeah. two years. Last ago. year was absolutely crazy because of the Todd Graham situation. That's right. You're right. Um, uh, so I like, I really like that that get, and I think he could be dynamic as far as like a dual threat. Uh, if they're, it's gonna be. I, I can't wait to see how they use him. Yeah. But I do think he mentioned a, a thousand career uh, rushing over yards. Over a thousand, yeah. And 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 I'm telling you, the guy's athletic. He's athletic. Uh, running back uh, Kerry Robinson is back, and this is what's crazy is I've played DFS enough to know that I know he only had like 400 yards. I've always I, he, I think he did decently out of the backfield too, but I was assuming he was the starter. I know uh, they had Nevins last year too, but Robinson was right there. Like I thought there wasn't much of a difference between Nevins and Robinson, so I think they're okay at the running back spot. Yeah, they got to run better though. They got to block better. They got I mean the, uh, some of that comes with the pass opening up. But I do think the dual threat angle of Cordiero is going to help. You're right. Well, Robinson yeah. was the far more effective uh, pass catcher than uh, Nevin last good. year. Yeah. He's good. So I, I'm sold there. Uh, they bring back Isaiah Hamilton and Jermaine Braddock at, at wide receivers. They did lose Derek Deese Jr., their, their star tight end, who I played in DFS a lot. But Hamilton and Braddock are back. But I'm really excited about a couple other gets that I'll get to. Uh, they are breaking in a new tight end. Like I said, Derek Deese Jr., gone. Uh, Sam Olson, a redshirt freshman who got a few grabs a season ago. Uh, he will be the guy. And then just two of five back on the O line. That's the scary thought. And led by Jamie Navarro. But we're going to talk a little bit about what they did. Uh, what about uh, special teams? They're they're losing a good kicker and a good punter and breaking in two new that's, ones. That's always, always something to talk about there. But the defensive side of the ball, I think Derek Odom did a great job as defensive coordinator last year, considering how long they were on the field. 68th in scoring defense, 34th in rush defense, 77th in pass defense, 54th in total defense in the country, and they're bringing back nine. That is promising. They're bringing back nine, and uh, that defensive line might have a guy you might remember. Defensive end Cade Hall won the Mountain West Player of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year in 2020. He's still there. Mm. Uh, they bring three of four back in the linebacking core, led by Kyle Harmon, who led the team in tackles last year. They can bring three of four back in the secondary, led by cornerback Nehemiah Shelton. It's a loaded defense. That defense is going to be good. Yeah. Um. Uh, what do you make of the team overall, though? I mean, it's tough to say. Like, I'd be lying again if I said I watched every single San Jose State game last year. Um, I kind of more monitored their progress as they went along and. Obviously it was a disappointment, but I didn't have as high expectations for them. I thought that they would be coming back down to earth. Um, they, they were five and seven a season ago. I believe that win total was at six. If memory serves me correct or six and a half, uh, they had, okay. They had a 23 point loss at USC. Um, the, the shocking game was the one at Kalamazoo to me, but they almost beat San Diego state. Like I said, double overtime, a three point loss to Nevada. They were close to being a bowl team. And uh, well, I think you're right that the Starkle injury really messed with them because 2020, he was 64% completion percentage, 17 touchdowns, seven interceptions. And he's all banged up last year, all the way down to 51% completion yeah. percentage, yeah, nine it touchdowns. It was a mess. Seven man. interceptions. So if a good quarterback in Cordero comes well, in, and even crazier is the way that you can use Cordero. Yeah. I, I mean, Cordero is the type of guy I think that can really be a dual threat. It like really put yeah. stress on defenses. Yeah. You know, which, you know, you want when you have maybe not the most talented roster top to bottom, which they don't, you know? Yeah. So the more ways that you can use a quarterback to stress the defense, obviously it's going to open things up for everyone else. Uh, we're going to get to transfer portal. We're going to get to recruiting rankings. We're going to get to what Las Vegas expects from the Sparty in uh, 2022. Uh, and what we expect of the San Jose state Spartans. But first I got to get us paid. I want to tell you that the college football experience, San Jose state Spartans preview on the sports gambling podcast network presented by win bet, bet a hundred dollars. at win bet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash win bet at sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bets today. We're also brought to you by IP vanish. Yes. IP vanish is the official VPN of SGPN and they're offering 70% off. If you go to IP vanish.com slash SGP, that's IP vanish.com slash SGP. 
We're also brought to you by SGP at Discord. Yes, make sure to check out our new Discord server. Nothing is greater than just look. I know plenty of times whether you're in a relationship or not. You know, I've, I, I, I sometimes I'm just chilling at the airport or if I'm you know whatever I'm at in life or where I'm, I'm waiting in the doctor's office something. And I'm sitting there sweating out of bed. It could just be at my house alone. Maybe my, maybe wife's out with the gals, yeah. right? And you're just sitting there saying, is anyone fucking watching this crazy game? Boom. And it's fun to just hop in the discord, especially if you bet the thing, but even if you didn't bet it, come, come, oh, you yeah. know, we have a whole like, house party of DJs that is in the discord. You got to check it out. It's a lot of fun. So, so just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash discord, take a screenshot of some of your action, send it yeah, our way. Yeah. Just talk about, Hey, I think this team and, and actually hopping in there, you can get Intel from what we're thinking. Uh, not, not only me and Patty C, just the whole SGP and family. I'm telling you it's, it's, it's fun. It's cool. It's smart. Um, all those things, but uh, yeah, check out that and uh, check out. We're also brought to you by odds trader. Yeah. It's odds trader is a place where uh, to compare odds from all the major sports books. And you can you can also compare all the different sign up codes and promotions from sportsbook to sportsbook to get the best deal. It's kind of great. Um, the, the app also provides player statistics, key game stats, injury reports, and projected game day weather for betters that to, that make the most informed bets possible. Uh, it also has a bet tracker, so betters can keep you know records of all the games you're betting on and all your activity. So go to oddstrader.com/slash blue wire. That's oddstrader, the number one site for all your game day bets. All right, we are back talking Spartans football, San Jose State Spartan football. Uh, Patty C. I'm going to go ahead and say, like, this is one of the more impressive transfer portals to me, gets at least of the group of five. Like I said, to me, they hit a home run with Chevin Cordiero yeah. uh, at quarterback, but then they go out. And and they get some key guys, I think, on the offensive line that will make a difference. They get uh, Maurice Talavu from Utah, the Utes. They get Malik Williams from Wyoming, and they got James McNorton from Washington State. Nice. Right? I think those guys are going to probably be. Uh, some of those guys will be starting day one. Some regional regional guys around yes. the area. And then uh, two stud wideouts from Nevada. Uh, if you didn't watch the Nevada Wolfpack and their air raid, Elijah Cooks was one of their best wideouts. Uh, Justin Lockhart wasn't bad either. Bringing in both those guys from Nevada. Huge. Kinda. Cause you mix them with their other two wideouts that they have. And I think you have four good wideouts now. Some impact transfers yeah. coming in here. Th- then uh, safety, Alicia Guidry from uh, UCLA and safety chase Williams from USC. I don't know that those guys will be starting because you're bringing back nine, but perhaps if they were at UCLA and USC, Patty C, I think they did a great job in the portal. Now I got to talk about what they lost because they did lose a couple. Uh, they lost uh, starting with running back. Jakai Torres is in the portal. They did lose one to Nevada. Bryce Peterson, an offensive lineman, uh, cornerback, Stan Livingston juniors in the portal. Uh, Cornerback Charlie Bostic the third is in the portal. Safety Malik Welsh went to McNeese State. Wide receiver Donald McKinley went to Western Illinois with the Leathernecks. Uh, Jamar Simpson, a wide receiver, is in the portal. Uh, wide receiver Andre Crump went to UC Davis. Wide receiver Isaiah Holiness went to UMass, which surprised me because I actually think that dude was pretty solid. I remember watching him. Uh, that one hurts a little bit, but well, once again, when you see what they got, yeah. At wide receiver, I don't think they're gonna. That, they seem they're to not be, gonna miss a beat. Yeah, yeah. taking players from much yeah. bigger programs and losing players to much smaller programms. I like that gift for Don Brown though at UMass. That um, is nice. D- Northeast now this, football. This one hurt though. Sinjun uh, uh, Astani on the defensive line went to USC. Oof. Um, defensive end EJ Na went to Portland State, who they open up with, and uh, I th- think that that caps off everybody. So, I mean, I, the big ones to me is on the defensive line, Sinjan Astani, uh, Isaiah Holliness. The, the others were kind of backups that just went to uh, Astani really didn't put up um, m- many numbers though, but still, I mean, for USC to want him, yeah, you, you know, you gotta be He's solid, then, talented, right? Yeah. Um, so I still think though, they won, they fucking won the portal yeah. getting Cordero, getting those offensive linemen getting Cordero yeah. alone yeah. wins them the portal, but all those other guys that are going to contribute. They did great. 71st nationally fourth within the conference. That is an insanely market improvement of what they had done in the previous three transfer cycles, which were 232, 
113 and 185, and then all the way up to 71 this year. There you he go. figured something out. Hey, it's easy to see that tide turn. Let's get to it, Patty. See if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see the sweet graphic here. Shout out to the F, uh, SGPN graphics team doing doing the Lord's work over there. Uh, but Patty C just six and a half By wins. Look at those uniforms. Look at that logo. They do have great uniforms. Amazing. We were talking San Jose. Sharks have great uniform and logo. It's true. San Jose. Something <laughs> in the water in San Jose. I'll say this, man. Out of all the teams in the Mountain West, this is the one I think the hardest to get a gauge on. Yeah. Like I feel like I know Fresno is going to be really good. Yeah. I know what to expect out of San Diego State. I know what to expect I, 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 out of uh, Air Force. I know what, what to expect out of Utah State. Boise's a little bit of enigma because of the seven and five season, yeah. but I think that was kind of a flash in the pain. I think they're really still good. Yeah. UNLV a little confusing. UNLV started to get better. Yeah. Uh, Colorado State year one Norvell. You know, I think I think they're going to be better. Uh, than than a season ago, but yeah. this is the one that like to me is all over the place. Like I, I see the win total six and a half, and I know Vegas is leaning towards a six and six season. If you look at the odds, uh, Vegas has it at uh, minus one thirty on the under, plus one ten on the over. But I also think this is like this is a team that could go five and seven yeah. or six and six. But I think it's also a team. That it w- I wouldn't be shocked if they won the Mountain West. Well, if their composition is similar to what it was in 2020, which is a stacked defense that, you know, it, it sounds like all the uh, publications we're looking at have high expectations for them um, defensively. Um, and then offensively, if Cordero can be the difference maker to bring them back up to at least where they were, got to stay healthy. I, think. I mean, Nash, having Nash there is decent because he got like five or six starts, I think, over the past two years, but. Um, Cordier has got to stay healthy, but yeah, they're kind of a, uh, they're kind of like a, a an interesting the potentials team. there. Yeah. I do think the schedule's hard as hell though. Well, they open up Thursday, September oh, wait, should 1st. I hit these transfers? Oh, yeah. real quick? I'm sorry. I'm transfer sorry. portal. Not that impressive, but he finally had a good year to, to, to make it uh, short and sweet well, transfer here. portal. They, they or not transfer portal uh, recruiting rather. Yeah. Recruiting. Okay. Uh, 94 nationally last five years, 94, 127, 120, 125, and then back up to 83. So really his best recruiting year uh, this past year within the conference. That's been about uh, anywhere from 12 in 2019, all the way to number four this year. So a little improvement there, but pretty much like not that great talent, I guess within the conference middling their composite rank last year was six within the conference. So they're an average, averagely talented team for the mountain West. Let's see if they can make it happen with all this experience. Thursday, September 1st, the Vikings row the boat into CEFCU stadium. How do you see Portland state shout out to Portland state, but they're five and six a season ago. They did bring in the running back. Uh, was it Van Buren from Boise state who I like, but I think San Jose state beats them in San Jose. Yes. Pretty so one and oh, pretty soundly. And then they head to Jordan hair to take on your sec champs, the Auburn <laughs> tigers. Do I need to remind you the last time San Jose state went on the road to an sec team? They won. When was that again? Two years ago. At Arkansas. At Arkansas. Yeah. Wow, man, talk about it. you. You called it. What what would put uh, Harson's seat into absolute flames right out the gate? Taking an L here, I don't know. I think Auburn. Gets I got to take one. Auburn, yeah. right? But but I still uh, wouldn't that be a wild one? That would be. Uh, so I got them one and one. They get a bye week after the Auburn game, and then they're home to Western Michigan. I do think they get revenge. Western Michigan lost Ellaby. They lost their star wide receiver. And they lost a ton. I think they get Western. That's a far trip for Western Michigan too. Twenty points, though. That's a big swing. They're going to have to make. They were up. asleep at the wheel last year. I agree. The bye yeah. week helps here. What is Western Michigan doing? Anything uh, before their big long road trip? I think. Oh, Pitt, they got right? Pitt the week before, and Michigan State two weeks before that. Western Michigan is going to be tired out for this game. Body blows left and right. San Jose State. Give me, give me Sparty. Two and one, and I think this is a critical game to the over when they go to war Memorial in Laramie to take on Wyoming. Now I'll say this. If you're going to play Wyoming in Laramie, you probably want to get them in the opener for the mountain West. This is the opener for the mountain West. So it's not going to be snowing. Most likely I mean, yeah. still a chance on October 1st, but <laughs> unlikely though. Oh man, this is a game dude. <sighs> Last year they won in San Jose, 27 to 21. Going you to get that high altitude the mountains. 
I'm on San Jose though. I think at the end of the day, I'm on San Jose. I think the Cordero get is just enough for me. <sighs> Flip a coin, but but I do think this game is huge. If you bet in the over, this is one you're gonna need. I think this is one that I'm. I don't know. Like knowing that the Cordero thing is the X factor, I would have taken Wyoming, but I think he's a good enough quarterback where he might be the difference. I'll, I'll give it to San Diego State or uh, San Jose State. So we got them three and one in, in pretty much the month of September. I know that was October 1st with the Wyoming game, right? Yeah. Uh, they are home to UNLV. This is another critical game. UNLV has been recruiting better. They haven't been able to translate that to wins. Mm-hmm. I think this game could be chippy, but it's in San Jose. I lean San Jose. This was a seven point win in uh, Las Vegas. Oh, I think last this is a year. close game. Yeah. Let me see here. Wyoming was a seven point win or a six point win last year. And UNLV was the, I'm going, I'm having them go one and one in that stretch. I think they're just better than UNLV. You're probably right. Uh, maybe I'll go two and up. I'll go two and on that stretch. <laughs> We'll say no. I have them at two losses. I have them at three and two at this. So point. I got them four and one. They yeah. head to Bulldog Stadium. Look, Jeff Tedford's back in Fresno. Jake Hayner's a Heisman hopeful. They're not winning in Bulldog Stadium. Yeah, I got them four and two. All right. And I think this is a sneaky, sneaky spot because you're thinking, oh, back to back away. You play a terrible New Mexico State team. That New Mexico State team almost beat you last year, and. And, six point game. Yes. And I think Jerry kill is going to make a difference. I think this game is, is a trap game coming off. I guess what should be kind of your arch rival. In yes, Fresno. I think it's a trap game. I'm still going to go San Jose, but I'm very nervous about that game. I kind of want to see uh, what the, the recent history in that I'm assuming they've got, they played that many times. Um, it's not New Mexico. It's New Mexico state state. I mean, they, as far as sports reference goes back, which we know is not all the way so, uh, most of the time, but uh, 18 and three all time in that series. So uh, let's give that one to uh, San Jose state. Okay. So I got them then at, uh, we have them at the same record then, right? We have them. At Wait, did you have them losing to uh New Mexico state? No, I'm going San Jose. Yeah. So 27, 24 final. I have them at four and three. I think you have them at five and two. Okay, and then they're home to Nevada. That's a win. I think Nevada's gonna be terrible this year. Right? <sighs> Dude, you're just you're just sleeping on Nevada. I think they're gonna be one of the worst teams they in the were country. Eight and four last year. They lost everybody. Yeah. Everybody. I'll give it to San Jose State, but I think I, I think you are assuming that Exodus is going to kill them much more than I do. Hey, well, I know two of Nevada's best offensive players are on San Jose State now. True. So True. uh you got them at six and two, six and two home to Colorado state. This is tricky. The fact that they get both those games at home does help because this is my over. You know what? Give me an, uh, give me a Colorado state upset. Okay. So you got them at six and three. I got them at like six and three or five and four. I haven't decided yet. Well, you might want to, mm. you better start thinking about yours, buddy. I got them at five and four. All right. Then they go to the snapper to take on San Diego state. They're probably better than Colorado State, though. They're going to lose the next two games at San Diego State, at Utah State. I think they are going to lose both those. And then they close the season with Hawaii. Cordero's revenge. I'm on the over. I got this team seven and five. I think there's a chance they're eight and four. I think there's a chance they're nine and three. Higher on. I also think there's a chance they're five and seven. Sparty than I am. <laughs> I got them at six and six. I'm on the under. This is a t- look at these away games though at Auburn at Wyoming at Fresno at New Mexico state. Okay. That's easy. But even the sec teams that are in the same conference as New Mexico state catch the joke. Uh, <laughs> they don't play in Las Cruces uh, at San Diego state and the snapper at Utah state. That is a tough road schedule. It's a very tough road schedule. Fresno state, San Diego state and Utah state all on the road. Fortunately, they don't get Boise this year. That helps. Um, or Air Force. Boise or Air Force. Uh, I mean, yeah, getting Colorado, that, that's the flip side of that. The games that they're probably going to lose anyway are on the road, and the games that's that are more 50 50 are home. Just think if they take care of business at home, what? Portland State, Western Michigan, UNLV, that's three. Nevada, four. Colorado State, five. Hawaii, six. six. All they would have to do is beat New Mexico State to hit the over. 
That's why you mm, take the over. You might be right. I think they dropped one of those. I am still on the under, but I am not confident about it. They the, could be. No, I think this is like must watch each week because yeah. they, I don't know what to expect. I could be really wrong here. This is certainly not going to be a lock of mine, but fun team to watch. Yeah, fun team to watch. Especially and I think, since he's kind of re- resuscitated this program. Definitely. Definitely. Bay so. Area football, baby. Let's go. Let's go, folks. I'm on the over. He's on the under. Folks, subscribe to the College Football Experience as we break down all 131 teams with the solo podcast like we do every year, but this year we got 131. Normally it's been 130, but the James Madison Dukes came to town. Hello. Patty sees boys. So uh there's 131 this year. Folks, also subscribe to the College Basketball Experience. Tim Miles and San Jose State. Decent year one. They were much more competitive. I think this year they're gonna be a lot better. And I think next I I just Keep an eye on them in the Mountain West because I do like what they are doing. I think he's a good coach. Uh, also, check out the Sports Gambling Podcast. Already doing NFL breakdowns, all 32 teams, the 49ers, San Francisco 49ers, Los Angeles Rams, Los Angeles Chargers. They're all going to be covered. I don't think they've covered them yet, but they've covered a few teams. I don't know. I think like the they're going from from worst to to best. So I think they've covered like the Detroit lions, the Washington Redskins, the Carolina Panthers, stuff like that. What are they? They're, they're a Niners fans up there. We yeah. said, yeah, I mean, or shout- Raiders, are they Raiders? Maybe, but I think it's closer to San Francisco than it is to Oakland. So I'm assuming San Jose fans are Niners, fans, especially since they put the stadium yeah, down, like at San Jose State, basically, yeah, right? Even yeah, I further, think so. right? Yeah, I, I think it's past it, right? Where Am is I that wrong? stadium? I don't know. Either way, yeah. uh, shout out to Ben Scully, by the way, who yeah. called? Rest in peace to the great Vince Scully. That yeah. Niners, uh, great moment. Joe Montana, the pump fake, the, the catch Ed against the Ed Dallas Tuttle Cowboys Jones in the air to Dwight Clark in the there end zone. Is. There it is. Classic. That's the kind of moment we want. At With, San Jose State. Yes, let's go support your local college football rivalries, folks. Uh, support your co- your local teams. All right, go out to a San Jose State game. Come on now, folks. Get there, uh, just kick back, enjoy some good old fashioned American football. All right, folks. Uh, I also want to tell you check out the Discord channel, Sports Gambling Podcast. Like I said, and also uh, if you give us a five star review on iTunes, make sure you take a screenshot of it. We'd certainly appreciate it. And if you do that screenshot thing and find me on Twitter at TCE on SGPN, that's the college experience on Twitter uh, or my own personal account at the Colby D we will uh, send you a college football experience t-shirt like that, like that sweet pennant right there. Uh, uh, what's that? San Jose state university, 11 minutes from Levi stadium. Wow. I'd say they're Niners fans over there. There you go. There you go. Patty C's on Twitter at Patty C831, NC Nick's on Twitter at NC underscore N I C K. We are the college football experience and the college basketball experience. Subscribe, tell a friend, subscribe on YouTube, all that good stuff. All right, folks, this is the college football experience, San Jose State Spartan style. You better start thinking about yours, and we out of here. I smoke and I drink and um, I don't have stress and I'm healthy. It's easy to see a tide turn. Coaching, uh, we're all, uh, our coaching did a horrible job. The players did a horrible job. We got our ass kicked in that second well, half. It's well, stuck. Well, yeah. stuck.